Hello, dear viewer, and welcome back to Night Springs, the multiversal DLC for Alan Wake 2. I am your host, Oversoul, and today we will be taking a look at an alternate reality where Jesse Faden never made it to the Federal Bureau of Control. And instead, her search for her brother led her to an abandoned, abandoned amusement park where everyone is being possessed by coffee? Wait, that can't be right. No? No? Okay. Yeah, I'm... I'm being told that that is indeed correct. Coffee. Okay then. I suppose we should check it out and see for ourselves. Young woman on a mission to save a missing loved one. Desperately trying to stay one step ahead of the shadowy government agents hunting her. Agents from the very same agency that took the only person she cares about. On her quest, she is guided by her mysterious alien guardian angel. Her guiding star shows her the way, as it always has. She does not know what strangeness awaits her, as she follows its unwavering light to the small town... Night Springs. Tonight's dreamlike episode, North Star. This is gonna get strange. There's no helping it. The universe is much deeper and weirder than people know. My brother and I know. We've seen it. We've seen you. But there are some people, an agency, that doesn't want anyone knowing more than what they see. That's why they took my brother and have been chasing me my whole life. But I can't keep running. <sighs> no. So, this world's version of Jesse ends up at Coffee World from Bright Falls, except it's in Night Springs. Um. Yeah. She still has Polaris, too. I think the answer to that door code is over here. Yep, 238. Think something here's important? What, the numbers? Polaris showed us the answer. 238. I've never been able to track down the government agency that took my brother. <clears throat> Until now. You helped me find this place. Now you'll help me get him back. Hello? Is anybody here? Just the shadow people. I'm sorry, the coffee people. Out of all the... What the fuck are those? Out of all the Alan Wake DLCs, or out of all the episodes of this DLC, this one I happens to be... Work. This place really makes me want a coffee. But I guess that's the point. Um, so anyways, sorry, this, uh, this episode plays the most like Alan Wake. Also, this, this is a puzzle we need to solve later on for a code we need. We're going to go ahead and get it out of the way now because it's complicated. And I'm just going to tell you the code is 487. Anyways, though. You, you figure it out by reading these posters and doing a little bit of math, which I don't want to do. But anyways, we have to get up there to that gazebo, but there's only so many ways we can go to get up there because the shadow people are blocking our path. And we don't have weapons yet. But this episode plays a lot like Alan Wake, where we have to use the flashlight to... Um, to get the darkness off of the enemies and then shoot him with our gun. The gazebo? Ma'am, here, get inside the light. Oh, look who it is, it's Tim Breaker. Oh, they don't like the light. You shouldn't be here, how did you even get inside? Shit, I'm a cop. Should I lie? I kind of let myself in. You got more than you bargained for, huh? 
Well, I should say it's another universe's version of Tim Breaker. I will say this across the entire, like I said before, across the entire multiverse, there's always one constant with every version of every character. The constant for Tim Breaker and Jesse Faden is that their multi multiversal counterparts always end up meeting up somehow. There's always a version of her and a version of him in every universe, and they always end up meeting each other somehow. And that's the case in Quantum Break as well, which, you know, we'll obviously we're going to do a replay of Quantum Break eventually. It'll probably be the next thing after the next Danganronpa game. Um, and in Quantum Break, where Tim Breaker is Jack Joyce and Jesse Faden is Beth Wilder, it's still the same people, just with different names, just alternate reality versions of them. Um, and Quantum Break came first, so technically Jack and, Joy Jack and Beth were first, and Tim and Jesse came after. But Tim and Jesse are just alternate reality versions of Jack and Beth. So, um, yeah. But you'll see even in the next episode, where we actually play as Sean Ashmore himself as an actor... Uh, there's a bunch of multiversal shenanigans there, and once again, we will run into a, a multiverse version of Jesse Faden. So, it just... These two, it seems like from this point forward, these two are always going to be connected to each other. So, that's interesting. And also, keep in mind that Sheriff Tim Breaker and all of his multiversal versions of himself, uh, all the Sean Ashmores out there, are all enemies with Mr. Door. You know, Mr. Door has it out for every version of him, and we'll see that come to fruition in the next episode as well. But it's also worth mentioning that Mr. Door in Quantum Break is known as Mr. Hatch. The alternate version of him in that game is Mr. Hatch, and he was played by Lance Reddick in that game, and Mr. Door was supposed to be played by Lance Reddick in, this uni in the Alan Wake games, but he passed away. So that's why it's a different actor. But it is still technically the same character, just a multiversal version. And the only reason they're not saying the names of the characters from Quantum Break directly and only alluding to them is because Microsoft still owns the rights to that game, so Remedy can't make it an official part of the Remedy universe, but it is an official part of the Remedy multiverse. So, um, but anyways, more on that later. What's going on here? What are those shadow people? Well, that's what I'm here trying to figure out. The government's been putting something in the coffee. Turning people into coffee monsters. The government? Is this the same government agency that's been chasing me all these years? Something in the coffee is doing this? Really? It took me a while to wrap my head around it, too. At first, I thought... Well, I don't know what I thought. But now it's clear. This is deep state science. I'm... looking for someone. My brother. Have you seen anybody? Well, only if you count those monsters. I'm sorry, ma'am. They've been abducting people from Night Springs, too. I'm here to get them back home. But now it's time you've left. It's not safe here. I'm not going anywhere until I find my brother. I respect that. There's a warehouse just past the park. It's locked up tight, has some fancy government security system, but the intercom is busted. I figure that's where they're keeping our missing folks. There's a, a spare pistol and flashlight on the bench. I'd feel better if you took them. Those monsters don't do well with light. And whatever you do, do not drink the coffee. Sounds like a plan. This should make things easier. And it'll be easier to see this way, too. Okay. Now we Let's just have to... that warehouse the sheriff mentioned. Yes, now we just have to... Me? have to get to the warehouse. Good to hear. And we still have this ver universe's version of Polaris with us, so... Coffee. 
Oh shit! Hi! Yeah, that's right. Our pistol has the same firing frequency as a fucking machine gun. Don't you just love the multiverse? This must be the warehouse. But how do I get inside? Uh, I guess we'll push the button and see if anyone's home. This is a restricted area. Hi, uh... I need to get inside. Please insert pass key. Sorry, I... Lost it. Please insert passkey. Oh, fucking machine. Passkey invalid. Do you submit to security questions for authorization? Sure. What's the question? Please recite the fourth word of Dark Triangle Coffee's mission statement. As seen in our orientation video. What kind of question is that? That is incorrect. Coffee? All right, so to figure out how to get in there, we need to watch a video. To find that orientation video. So now we got to go back and ask this reality's Sean Ashmore or Tim Breaker or Jack Joyce or whoever the hell he is in this reality. Uh, Cuz they do have different names in different realities sometimes. Sometimes they have the same name and sometimes they Sometimes they're a completely different person who just looks the same. Hey. Well, the security okay. system wants some kind of password to get into the warehouse. So you got to work. I wonder why it wouldn't turn on for me. What did it ask for exactly? It asked for the fourth word of the Dark Triangle Coffee mission statement. Any idea what that is? Of course, it wants you to watch the video. The info you're after is on a videotape, but it is chock full of government brainwashing. I watched a bit of it. It was doing something to me. It's dangerous. You can't watch that tape. I need that videotape, Sheriff. Well, this is exactly how they get you. But fine. If you really want it, I hit it in the Ferris wheel, cup number four. You'll need this key. Don't say I didn't warn you. It's okay. You don't have to warn us. We already know what we're getting into. All right. Ferris wheel time. We have to follow the signs towards the tasting room to get to the... Ferris wheel. By the way, there are collectibles in this episode. There's, you know, those cult stashes that were around. Here, I know there's one over here, For as a matter of fact, somewhere nearby. Well, not over here, but I'll show you in a minute. But I already got the trophy for them on my first playthrough, so I'm not going to waste time finding them all for this, because it's not necessary. Ah, shit. Okay. But, like, just for an example, there's one over here. You have to go out of your way for them. They're, like, hidden in dead ends and stuff. Which is why I'm not going to do it, because I'm trying to get all these done in under an hour each. But, like, remember when we had to do the little Simon Says thing? in the main game and then they get harder with each one you find all that's in these are ammo and batteries and healing items stuff that we'll be chock full of by the time we finish this dlc anyways
also, all of these start on normal, regardless of what your main game difficulty is. All right, so he said he kept the thing we need in episode, or er, in, wow, in the fourth car. So we'll just take care of that real quick. By the way, these DL these episodes are all going to take significantly less time to play through f for these videos that I'm doing than they did when I first played them because I actually know what I'm doing and I can just fly through it. You know, when I played these by myself at first, I didn't know what I was doing. I had to solve puzzles. I had to, you know, I took the time to look around and find all the collectibles. I'm not doing I'm not having to worry about any of that here. I I can just beeline straight for the story. for a movie? All right, time to go watch this movie. All right, the Welcome Center is where we go to watch the videotape. Boy, watching a uh, live-action videotape while playing as Jesse Faden, that feels familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Although this isn't the Jesse Faden that we've gotten to know from Control, obviously. This is a different version of her. But still. Triangle Coffee is a fast-growing company with ambitions to sweep the nation, and eventually the globe, with our out-of-this-world beverages. Drawn by our coffee's distinctive flavor and our unique beans, people are rushing to join the Dark Triangle Movement. The company's mission statement is simple. To drink the truth there. is to become That's what we need. one. Password our is financial truth. And spiritual growth now... I just noticed another multiversal constant here, by the way. This shady government agency that's using coffee to control people also uses a upside-down black triangle as their symbol, even though it's, it's the top half of the coffee maker. But still, he just said dark triangle cult or whatever the fuck he said. Um, nation, dark triangle nation or whatever. Anyways, upside-down black triangle, that's the board in control. That's the, the, the ones who communicate with the director. It's the symbolism is everywhere. And also, the upside-down black triangle is the multiverse door, the Ocean View Hotel, that leads to the Federal Bureau of Control. So um, there's that. So uh, there's another multiversal constant for you. We can do Something is in my head. Please, you need to dream. Please, no, no, please, boy. You stopped it. Oh, that was awful. Like a voice screaming in my head. But. We got what we needed. The fourth word of the mission statement. Truth. Let's get back to that warehouse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The video was doing something to me. If you hadn't been there, what would have happened? It's kind of like what when... What is this agency trying to do here? Control people? But why? What's their plan? Huh. What if my Con brother has already been... Control. No, I didn't come all this way to lose him now. Control, you say, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like when Jesse entered the Bureau and the Hiss tried to take her over, but Polaris was there, so she was able to make it without one of those um, HRAs, without wearing one of those HRA devices. HRA stood for Hedron uh, Resonance Amplifier, by the way, because it amplified the resonance of Hedron, <laughs> the polyhedron uh, creature that Dr. Darling was keeping in the basement of the Bureau. 
that Jesse ended up uh, trying to save, but the hiss ended up killing it. Truth. See, this is why we did that puzzle earlier. 487. That is correct. Further verification required. Oh, come on! Try the coffee. I don't want to drink your damn coffee. Try the coffee. Try the coffee. That's going to be a problem. We have no choice. But I can't stop now. You'll keep me safe. Right. All right, well, this is about to get really creepy, by the way. Out of the three episodes of this DLC, this one is by far the most horror focused. Not much comedy to hear. Yeah, this looks completely normal. Well, except for the the dark comedy fact that it's coffee instead of darkness. You know, maybe it's a dark roast. <laughs> okay. Here goes nothing. It's so silly. I'm trusting you. This franchise has a weird obsession with coffee. That wasn't so. <gasps> Once again, Polaris saves our ass from possession. Are you all right, Sheriff? I heard gunshots. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I was looking for you when one of those things jumped me. Got a little bit of coffee in my mouth, but I spit it out. Should be fine. But listen, I figured something out. What did you figure out? Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Those government bastards will never get me. <laughs> but it, it's not just the government. There's something else here. I, I don't know what it is, but it's... You need to get your brother and get out of here as soon as you can. Promise me. Yeah. I promise, Sheriff. Good. That's good. I'm just gonna catch my breath here a minute. I'm... <sighs> All right. You have fun with that. Yep, this kind of sucks. This next part is one of those parts where we have to avoid something that, uh, we have to avoid something that can kill us in one hit. You know, like, like a modern horror game. So this is a stealth section. Remember though, much like the um, much like the Taken in the main game, we can hide from these coffee mug monsters in the light. All we gotta do is grab a key and get inside a door. It's super easy, actually. There's a, a whole extra area over there that we don't even need to go to because it's there's another monster patrolling and there's nothing over there for us. It's a waste of time. So here's the key we need. Probably worth holding on to. And then the door to put it in is literally right here. 
That's it. That's all we have to do. Easiest stealth section in any horror game ever. <laughs> it took me literally... I died the first time because I didn't realize where the key was. I didn't realize it was that close. So, yeah. I have done their bidding, packaged their coffee, and brought the people to Coffee World to share their blessing. They say I am almost ready. All right, let's find out who's behind all this coffee nonsense, shall we? What? Tim? Sheriff? Dun, dun, dun. Sheriff. How'd you get in here? Coffee time is family time. It's the it's best the part of the day. Hey, snap out of it. Coffee solves all your problems. It lowers heart disease and leads to higher life expectancy. Fuck. I think the opposite is true. I'm so sorry, Sheriff. I need to find my brother. He oh. has to be okay. They got to poor Sheriff, but... He'll never be the same again. What the hell? Yeah, that's Have a lot of... Seen anything like this? Weird cosmic shit. Well, folks, this episode is coming to an end, so I'm going to go ahead and say my goodbyes now. This isn't the government. And just like last time, I'll let Mr. Door take us out at the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you expecting Dylan Faden? Nope. In this reality, her brother is Alan Wake. Spooky. The conspiracy within the conspiracy. How can one expose a lie when the truth exists beyond our wildest imagination? Who can ever truly know how deep the rabbit hole? In the night springs. 